But first, FanDuel is America's number one sports book. And if you're looking to score early this NFL season, you'd be better be doing it with FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. That's $150 bucks if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time than right now to get in on the action. The app is simple to use, and they have a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and much, much more. So visit FanDuel.com slash UCSS to kick off the NFL season. That is FanDuel.com slash UCSS. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL, an official partner of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. And I have gotten so many winning FanDuel tickets over the last Love few days. It. We're going to feature two today. The first one comes from Robert W. Chasing, who turned $4.30 into $518 on a Tuesday night six-part same-game parlay. He had Trey Young over 30 points, Halliburton over 12 assists, Maxi over 30 points, Yusuf Nurkic over 15 points, mm. and Austin Reeves over 15 points. All that hit, and my guy Robert turned four dollars and thirty cents nice. into five hundred and eighteen dollars. If you have a winning FanDuel ticket, I didn't know you ticket, could bet change. You can bet anything you want. It's on really FanDuel. amazing. It's you can do whatever incredible. you want. That could be sometimes you have four thirty left in your account. You yeah. throw it on a crazy parlay, and you wake up the next day with five hundred and eighteen dollars. Yeah. So if you have a winning ticket, tweet it at me at Mike Lucas TV at UCSS. Email it to us, and we will feature it on the show at some point. But congratulations, that's a hell of a win there for Robert. Uh, for the Browns at the Broncos, the latest spread at FanDuel, the Broncos are favored by one and a half. The line, Broncos opened as a one and a half point favorite. They actually went up to a two and a half point favorite, and then. Uh, on Wednesday, I believe, it went back to one and a half, and it stayed there. The over-under is 36 and a half on the game. I, it's a weird thing that's happening now um, for Browns fans. You know you know the expression, uh, act, you know, act like you've been there before? Mm-hmm. You know, Nick Chubb scores a touchdown, hands the ball, we're all like, you act like you've been there before. This is a new experience for Browns fans being a good team. Most fans here haven't experienced the Browns being a good team. And there's things that fans are not used to. Uh, Like, there's a lot of trash talking going on from Browns fans to other fan bases. And I think we're preemptive with that. I think we're a little preemptive. Have you seen that with the Broncos? Like, is that a thing? No, it's more like the Steelers fans and Ravens fans. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay, I I, I get it. We beat them. But we got to do more than just win a regular season game. We got to, whatever. People are excited. I love that. But the really weird thing is, and this always happens to teams that are unexpectedly better and, be, you know, like for the first time in a while. And every time when the Browns are an underdog in a game or if somebody out there predicts that the Browns are going to lose, people get personally offended by that. And I don't understand that. Like like if, if, you, if you're saying like, okay, you, you're saying the Browns are, people think the Browns are going to win, but if, if somebody says, oh, well, look, I think the Broncos are playing at home. I th- I'm going to go with the Broncos. They're yeah. like, People are pissed. You're trash. You're like, how, yeah, how dare you? Yeah. Which is crazy. Because, I, I mean, I think. NFL, it, really good teams lose every week. Every week? <laughs> it's, the Chiefs lose. Yeah. Multiple I mean, times look, a year. The Lions have been one of the best teams in football. They looked awful yesterday. Yeah, they did. Which is unusual because normally they're pretty good on Thanksgiving. They No. The Lions? Yeah. They look better. I don't know what you've been watching. No, I've seen them in terrible years where they're two and eight going into that game, and they yeah. play their they play their butts off. But they did not play well yesterday. No. They were awful in the front. Jared Goff has been the mess the last two weeks. I don't know what's going on, but but anyway, uh, the point is, it's it's okay. It's not a nobody's trying to piss you off by picking. Sometimes you think the other team is going to win. You can't pick, even us. We can't pick the. Well, maybe G, but uh, <laughs> you can't pick the Browns to no, win every week. To lo- you picked them to lose one game. Didn't I, I picked them to lose Seattle. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And you were right by that. Uh, but I'm saying, like, just be- and, and because somebody's picking your team to lose doesn't mean they're rooting for your team to lose, right? So anyway, go well, ahead. Into the first topic though today, guys. Yeah. DTR will be making his second start, his second real start. We could throw Baltimore out the window. You that- can't say that. It, it's his. It's his third start. Yeah. I'm considering this the second real start. Baltimore, you I don't could consider a real acknowledge start. Acknowledge that he was put in a tough spot, but it's still his third yeah. start. Well, it's the second start of his iteration as a Browns starting quarterback okay. tenure. In this so iteration. whatever. We could can we could argue minutiae uh, how you want to. We won't argue about but that. Go ahead. This is his Okay, third start. Whatever. You, you win, Bull. It's his third start. You're right. It technically is his third start. But yeah. I don't look at it like that. But yeah. either way, 
We saw it last week, and G said it on Monday's postgame show. The Browns played a dangerous game against Pittsburgh, and they played it beautifully. And now that's on tape. So looking ahead, Denver knows what they did with DTR, how Kevin Stefanski designed plays. 39 of his 43 passes were within 10 yards of the line of scrimmage. They're going to have their adjustments. So how does Kevin Stefanski in this Browns offense adjust? And I'll use the word unlock or unleash. How does the Browns offense adjust to unlock DTR against Denver? Well, before we get to that, guys, in, in the same vein, do we think they have to? Like, can the Browns win against Denver exactly the same way? Or is Mike right? Do they need to unlock him or how, whatever you want to call it to a certain degree? Is he going to have to play better or can he play the same for them to win? G, go ahead. I think he has to play better. Um, I think Denver is a good enough defense where they'll get turnovers. You take a look at their turnovers that they've had so far um, against the Buffalo Bills. They had some turnovers. Uh, they got turnovers against the Vikings. Both of those teams have been playing better. Um, and when I look at this this game, I think DTR, he can't come out and just have the game where he hopes to get the ball at the last part of the the, the, the fourth quarter and, and, and come up with some heroics. I, I think there's a expiration date on that type of stuff. Uh, as you play more games, there's more of a sample size. People get comfortable with what you do best. They take that away, and you have to at least make one adjustment. If the Browns want to want to make a sustained run, they're gonna have to they're gonna have to reinvent themselves a few more times. They're gonna have to reinvent themselves as, with DTR. Um, find something that, that they can really hang their hat on if they get that. And then once they get to the playoffs, they're going to have to reinvent themselves again too because at that point you're playing against good defenses, solid coaches. So I do think they're going to have to do some, some other things. I think they're either going to have to let him throw the ball downfield a little earlier in this game or they're going to have to bring the, the factor of, of his legs into, into play. They haven't done that so much. I think either one of those things have to, has to happen for, the, for them to – you know, continue to the, the win streak. Jason? If I'm Denver, I'm watching the second half of that Browns-Steelers game and basing my entire defensive scheme off that second half. The Browns didn't score until the last drive, kicking the field goal on the last drive in the second half because the Steelers knew they weren't going to throw the ball down the field at that point. They're sitting on the routes. They're putting eight, even nine in the box and saying, go ahead, we dare you to throw deep. Now, what makes Kevin great as a play caller is the things that kind of drive people nuts, including me. You think he's going here, we're going there. You bring Harrison Bryan in to sneak, Okay, we might sneak, but we're also going to pitch it wide on fourth down. Mm -hmm. Bringing Jacoby Brissett in on a sneak on fourth down. You think we're going to sneak it? Nope, we're throwing it to the end zone at Cincinnati. That part was missing in the second half last week. They did exactly what you thought they were going to do the entire time. And we've talked about, like, deep shots. I thought at some point I was texting with our subscribers, and I was telling them it's coming. They're going to throw a deep shot at some point, and it never came. It's going to have to at some point. We've talked for weeks about if you're going to win this way, it's heavy, it's jumbo sets, it's extra offensive linemen, it's screen passes, it's running the ball, but it's also play action and taking deep shots on third down. That's the part we didn't really see last week. That's the part I think that they're going to have to incorporate at some point. Otherwise, it's going to be a lot more of what we saw in the second half where defenses just don't fear you. And at some point, you have to make them respect the fact that you will go down the field and you will stretch the field. It doesn't have to be every time. It's funny because if you go back to the DTR first start that Mike doesn't want to acknowledge, yeah. <laughs> that's all they did was take deep that's shots true. and yeah. chunk plays down the field. We didn't see it at all against Pittsburgh. There's got to be a balance in there. There has to be a happy medium. Just don't turn the ball over. Like, that's the whole thing with me. Just don't turn it over. I don't care what your numbers are at the end. Yeah. I don't care what your completion percentage is. If you throw for 160, 165 yards, you can win yeah. as long as there's a zero in that turnover column. And they got away with one last week. It was off a deflection. You know, I don't know how much you want to put on that on him or not. Just don't turn it over. Keep everything in front of you, and you can win this game. But I do think eventually you have to loosen up that defense, and you do have to take some sort of shots on the field. Ahead, I just want to say, it's not yeah. that I don't want to admit this start happened. I know it happened. <laughs> I just don't think I learned anything about DTR, and I That's refuse right. to, to think – I know anything about his future, what he can or can't do based on that game. And that's because fair. Of how the week I, I agree. That's I, fair. I think there's a difference between don't hold that game against him and he didn't play right. in that game. <laughs> okay, you know? fair. Like, it, it did happen. Here, yeah. It never happened. Just like yeah. we, we could all agree Bigfoot's not real. We could all agree that DTR versus Baltimore in week uh, four did happen. There's thousands of people out there, millions probably, that think Bigfoot's real. But those oh, yeah. people are insane. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, what a shocker. We never we never fought my son. He, he, he thinks Bigfoot's real. There you go. So they're in that group. But you're allowed to. You're a kid. Uh, 
Let me let me let me get into this here with with the Broncos and absolutely DTR's got to do a little more in this game. They have to. I was I was fine with the game plan last week because the Steelers' offense is completely inept, and the Steelers couldn't prepare for that type of offense for the whole game. They adjusted in the second half, but the Browns were able to score ten points in the first half. Because at the time, the Steelers didn't know going into the game. Mm-hmm. Well, the Broncos are going into this game saying, hey, we're, we're getting eight guys in the box. We're not going to let them run. He's going to try to dink and dunk. We're not going to let him win that way. So you're going to have to try to go over the top sum. Now, as Jason said, and I agree 100%, it can't be what it was against the Ravens. You can't be throwing deep all the time. And I think even more importantly than him having better numbers is the running game being more effective. And the running game will be more effective, most likely, if you take some deep shots because that will loosen things up in the middle. The Broncos are a fascinating team because they're everything about them is average. They they're not terrible at anything, yeah. But they're not very good at anything. Medium sauce. Their every their whole roster is a bunch of medium sauce players. Medium sauce. And uh, but a medium sauce team has the best. They have the longest winning streak in the NFL right now. So, and they're at home. I think this is a tough, I mean, this is a 50-50 game. This game's a toss-up. It's a one and a half point spread for a reason. This game's a toss-up. And so, yes, DTR is going to have to get you a little more. And I think the way to unlock that is, A, take some deep shots, and B, run the ball effectively. I think the Browns early in this game are going to have to be creative in how they run the ball because the Broncos are going to basically go into this game saying, hey, we're not going to let you run. DTR has got to beat us. And we don't know yet if he can. And, and you know, e- even when DTR drops back, if there's nothing there, um, I wouldn't mind just just him take it off and get it two, three, four yards. They should hey, they should have some designed runs for him. Yes. Period. Yeah. I, I, I mean, he's he had a few of those last week. Right. I, I just – you talk about a dangerous game. You already well, lost that's one true. quarterback. That's true. And he and, is so and tiny. And he's not very big. Yeah. And so I think you really need to be strategic and limit when you want. That's fair. When you're calling called runs for him because yeah. now you're down to, if he goes down, you're down to P.J. Walker or Joe Flacco who just got here. I like call. I like called runs in short yardage and goal line. <laughs> yeah. And at least at least that way you get five or six yards. Heck, I even seen, uh, I was watching the Washington uh, Cowboys game. And they ran, they ran speed option. I was like, okay, I like that play. At least, you know, you can get down. It's only a few yards to the end zone. You either yeah. make it or you don't, and you can run it again. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind. I, but I don't want to see anything crazy in the middle of the field or around the 50s because, I mean, he got lit up against the first time he played the Ravens. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Is Flacco – we don't know yet if Flacco is going to be – technically, Flacco's on the practice squad right now, isn't he? To my understanding, he has not yet been elevated. Well, he has to be – But right. he's on the practice squad. Yes. Correct. Yes. So he'd have to be elevated by tomorrow. Well, he, they have to put him on the 53 in order to make him the third string quarterback for Sunday. Unless he's going to be the two. Well, and again, he'd have to be on the 53. Right, right, right. So yeah. they'd have to get him on the 53 by today. By tomorrow. Oh, I thought it was tomorrow. Um, well, whatever. It, it, sometime soon. Yeah. They'd have to add him to the roster. But uh, and Are we sure that uh, – I, I thought that that was the case. Are we sure that they would be Flacco? Now? No. This early? I, uh, no. This over P.J. Walker? Here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think we know. I think it de- well, we'll, we'll find out on Sunday. Yeah. Well, we'll find out either today or tomorrow if he's added to the – called up from the practice squad. Right. But, you know, the, the third quarterback can come into the game if he's on the 53, but he doesn't have to be active. He doesn't have to be one of the 45 Correct. actives. But he, you got to be on the 53. Correct. So, but we'll see if and once that emergency quarterback goes in, the other two are not allowed to go. Right, right, right. This right. is weird. This is weird. Have you ever seen a a team um, like seven and three is a nice story. If you win this week on the road and go to eight and three, now there's just it's it's more it's more of a thing. Like, have you ever seen a team be eight and three with with the names they have at quarterback? Like, you got a veteran that's forty that you picked up off the street. You yeah. got a guy in DTR who's had like played three games, and you got a, a journeyman PJ Walker, and the team is is literally. How do you plan around that? Like that's like, you know, you you can't. I'm sure, it's happened. It's, it's not hard. nothing's coming to me off the top of my head. 
I it is a weird situation. I haven't seen that where where you have n- like no. It's a huge question mark at quarterback, and they continue to win football games. Yeah. I, I haven't seen that in such a I long mean, time. I'm like, trying to look at the teams that are leading their divisions. I mean, tech, last year the Niners had a ton of injuries at quarterback. Yeah, but, but yeah. the talent. Of, that's true. I mean, but their talent was a lot better than what the Browns have, especially but, offensively. Yes. Yeah, right. Christian but McCaffrey going into the season, if you would have said Brock Purdy is going to be their playoff in the quarterback, right. uh, the quarterback in yeah, the playoffs, you would right. have said, "What are you out of your mind?" Yeah, right. yeah. Now he's a you know somewhere between the seventh and fifteenth best quarterback. So yeah, it's just it's weird. Like I, I was watching the games and I, I just couldn't have I didn't have any context because I couldn't argue, I couldn't definitively say the Browns were better than any other teams. Usually we compare the Browns to teams we watch it, and you're like, "Oh, the Browns are they get smashed by this team." I, I didn't have any context for it. I, I just don't know because I don't know what the Browns going to do week to week. Yeah, I, I mean, think the last two weeks have gotten everyone's attention in terms of the Browns. I don't yeah. think winning in Denver will add to their profile any more than these last two. Beating Baltimore and Pittsburgh in back-to-back weeks, I think everyone else around the country is saying, yeah. okay, what's going on in Cleveland? Like, yeah. we have to, This is no longer like they're the Browns. We don't have to worry about them. Yeah. I think these last two weeks, when you combine that with San Francisco – but beating Baltimore and Pittsburgh, I mean, I I was saying just get a split. Just yeah. split those two, <laughs> yeah. and you're okay. And I never dreamed realistically no. that you would yeah. win both of those. So I think around the country, it's these last two that have made yeah. people stand up and take notice. Well, because team. I think, you know, any of us that are old enough, which the three of us are, we remember a day where you could win with, Minimal quarterback oh, sure. play if you had oh, yeah. a great defense. Yeah. Don Strzok but, won games for the Browns. I mean, yeah, you know. I mean, you, you, those days are, you know, but now it's, it seems like it's been a long time since you've been able to win that way. And I think a lot of people are thinking, like, how far can the Browns yeah. go? They've yeah. got the best defense. I think everybody acknowledges that the Browns defense is the best in the league. I saw something. I've, I've been trying to find it. Yeah. I wish I'd have marked it. Yesterday on Twitter, I saw something. There was a scatter chart about the Browns and Broncos, and the Browns' defense is in the far upper right tier, as right. high as you can go, and the Broncos is in the lowest possible. I know, I know what you did. I saw that. You yeah. saw it was it? in terms of uh, – Success rate defensively or something? The analytics are not defense. kind to the Broncos. No. no. The, well, the, the whole – and we'll get to this in the five-pack and McNuggets, yeah. but how much Miami skewed all the Denver metrics. But yeah. it was in terms of success combined with their conversion rate. So how often they got teams on <coughs> the field in the first four plays. You. So you, you saw what I was talking about. Yeah. Yes. It could not be more. Right. Than, I thought I marked it because I wanted to send it to you, but at least you saw it. Yeah, I, so Cleveland is – and I, I'm sure I can find it. I'll pull it up in a sec. But Cleveland is, since the tracking era started of it, I believe the highest conversion rate on getting teams off the field within the first – not three and out, but yeah. within the first four plays. And Denver is dead last. Denver worst. only had one – three and out in like a two week stretch. Yeah, they've, they've forced a lot of turnovers the last bunch of weeks, which has obviously helped them. And that goes back to the stat we were talking about Monday right. that I think Mike's got again. Right. We're going to mention but that again the, later, yeah. The Broncos are one of the worst run defenses in the league. And we've talked, we've had these debates about the running game. The Browns got to be able to run in this game. Yes. Uh, but one of the things, I was just trying to think if there's another playoff team that's got a messy quarterback situation. And there is. Minnesota right now is a playoff team with Josh Dobbs as yeah. their quarterback. Go figure. He's their third quarterback, too, because they – obviously, Cousins gets hurt, and then Jaron Hall, who was a rookie on their team, started the first game after they traded for Dobbs. Now, Dobbs may eventually be the starter anyway, but they did draft Jaron Hall, and he got hurt in the first game he played. That's when Dobbs took over. Why Why? Do, why is it to me, like, why do I feel like – I don't know. This might not be true. Why do I feel like Dobbs is not much of a question mark like I guess you, you I don't know I don't know I, I think Dobbs I, is, I, mean, I know he's done a decent job this year I, maybe since he played for like three teams and they yeah keep but he's played all up. season that's but why that's it feels why. Doesn't like, feel like his big question yeah, mark yeah. but he's freaking brilliant like he's got to be the smartest quarterback in the league just that's in terms true. of processing just for picking up playbooks I, I, he, well he's, he's just he's like an actual IQ take football out of the equation I mean he was a rocket scientist right. in Tennessee and went back and finished his Rocket scientist. I don't even know what the actual degree is, but yeah, you're not obviously rocket, not a rocket Scientology. Scientist. I'll, I'll look it up. I'm not a rocket scientist. I can assure you that. <laughs> but no, his ability to process quickly, yeah. obviously, like he's brilliant. I, you know, aerospace engineering. By the look way, I still think there's not a ton of tape on him. Obviously, every week yeah. adds a little bit more. 
I mean, he could be the Jacoby Brissett of this offseason where right. he could be parlay this into a, a starting job next year for yeah, a low-level maybe. team. Possibly. I mean, right now there's so many teams with bad quarterback situations. Who knows? And I told you this stat yesterday, Bull, Jason and G. I'm not sure if you heard this, but only five teams in the NFL have not put their starting quarterback on the injury report this season. 27 of the 32 teams. Doesn't mean they necessarily haven't played in games. Right. Come but on. have had their quarterback on the injury report. Only five teams Shut up. through essentially the halfway point, a little past halfway, but yeah. we're not in week 18 or week 16 yet, have had their quarterback on the injury well, report. Well, how many teams have played two quarterbacks? Or have had a quarterback at least leave a game for an injury? It's got to be more than half the league. I'll count them right now. So You know, I know Geno's played every game for Seattle, but he left the last game, yeah. and he looked like a mess yesterday. He I, looked You want to go through it real quick? Yeah, go ahead. I got you right here. So, Tua has not been on the injury report yet. So, okay. Tua, shockingly, of all, of, with all his concussion history, right. he's one of the five. Well, he's not, not playing that well since the last Lately, the last no, few but weeks. he has not showed up on the injury report. No. Josh Allen has not come out of a game yet. Yep, right. The Jets have played multiple quarterbacks. Yep. The Patriots have played multiple quarterbacks. So that's two. Lamar Jackson has, Although, I don't I, – the Patriots have played multiple quarterbacks because their quarterback sucks. I don't think Mac Jones has actually gotten hurt. He has not. So he's okay. actually one of those five teams. Yeah. But he – I'm just saying multiple quarterbacks. Right, right, They've right. played multiple. Lamar has played all season. Yep. The Browns have played multiple. The Bengals have played multiple. Steelers have. Steelers have played so that's multiple. That's five out of eight that have played multiple so far. Jacksonville has not. It's only been Trevor Lawrence. Right. C.J. Stroud has not. It's yep. only been C.J. Stroud. Well, he came out for two plays, but I'm not counting that. No, that doesn't count, yeah. Uh, Indianapolis has played two quarterbacks. That's six. Tennessee has played two quarterbacks. That's seven. The Chiefs and the Broncos have not. Right. Mm. They're stayed. Chargers haven't. Chargers haven't, but the Raiders have. So that's eight. That's half the AFC. Half the AFC. I've had more than one quarterback play. In the NFC. Yeah. Jalen Hurts has been healthy. He's yeah. been on the injury report, but he hasn't missed time. Dak's been healthy. Dak has not been on the injury report. He's one of the five that has not showed up on the injury report. Uh, Sam Howell's been on the injury report, but he hasn't missed time. Yeah, yeah. The so Giants only the have Giants. Different so the Giants in yep. the NFC. The Lions are the only team in the NFC North. Right. Because Minnesota's played multiple quarterbacks. Chicago's played it. And I, I'm not. Jordan Love hasn't yeah, missed Green time. Yeah, Green Bay has. Jordan so that's Love. three. I, I okay. This is the division where they've all played different quarterbacks. The Saints. Yep. Jameis has played significant time. Yep. The Falcons split time between Ritter and Heineke. Yep. The Panthers, Andy Dalton started a game. That's six. And Baker. Baker's played the whole time. Baker didn't miss one game? I don't think so. I'll look that up. Yeah. Uh, Purdy, in and out with the concussion. I don't think he missed I, a lot of time. but I, No, he I don't think he missed it okay, at so all because they, they diagnosed it after the game, so that doesn't count. Gino, do you want to count seven, with the Drew Locke? yeah. And then the Rams and the Cardinals both have played multiple quarterbacks. So that's nine. So that means 17 of the 32 teams that's crazy. have played multiple quarterbacks. That's crazy. <laughs> Already. And we still got, what, seven weeks to go in the regular 50 season. 50 different quarterbacks. And it'll be even more this week with Tim Boyle being 51. Yeah, right. Well, started a game well, this and, season. Well, and uh, what's his name? Uh, I can't think of the Bengals' backup quarterback. Oh, uh, Browning. Yeah, he's starting his so first game. So, 52 quarterbacks after this week. Which yeah, starting, yeah, yeah, which is just And Drew Locke's going to start a game before the end of the season because Gino looked like a mess. 53, yeah. yeah. He, well, he got, I'm surprised he came back in the game he, he left last week. Right. When he got blasted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I 